I'm William Ripple. I'm from Oregon State University, and I'm a, a distinguished professor of ecology there. And I'm really interested in how nature works, the interconnectedness of nature. And I'm finding, like, if we change one thing, disturb one part of nature, there's these ripple effects that affect all other parts. So I'm a fairly broad-based ecologist studying plants, animals, climate, but I, what I find interesting is this topic of environmental nutrition. So it, it, in, in environmental nutrition, we ask the question, well, what are the co-benefits to changing diet, for example, stop eating beef, on the humans, the human health, and on the environment? I believe diet, human diet, or what I call human carnivory, is a major player, a major factor in the decline of ecosystems around the world. I'm seeing this human carnivory, meat eating by humans, affecting climate, affecting biodiversity, affecting ecosystems on the landscape level, even to the point where humans and their meat consumption or human carnivory, they are competing with the wild carnivores to the point where we will persecute the wild carnivores so we'll have more space for our livestock or uh, for our hunting of game. So once we see those big carnivores get depleted from the terrestrial landscapes, we are in trouble because there are these cascading effects. So we lose a top predator, that affects the prey, that affects uh, the entire food chain. In the oceans, if we lose the, the sharks, that can have these same rippling effects on the, the prey of the sharks and the prey of the prey of the sharks. And there's these cascading effects that will put these uh, ecosystems in a very impoverished state. Let me give you an example. There's Hart Mountain National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon. This is a place that had cattle grazing on it since the late 1800s, early 1900s. But in 1990, the managers decided to remove the cattle from Hart Mountain. So as researchers, we went there and decided to look at how the ecosystem would change. And it was night and day. It was a degraded ecosystem with the cattle. The streams were eroding. The willow were eaten down and trampled. There was uh, huge amounts of bare soil. Then they removed these cattle and we looked at the response. And this, this is just like completely impressive. It's called passive restoration and the ecosystem just flourished. All we had to do was give it a chance, remove all those head of livestock and the soil erosion decreased as the plants started coming in on their stream banks. The grasses, the sedges, the willows, and then the songbirds appeared. This is really uh, a great uh, experience to see how biodiversity will flourish as soon as we remove the offending agent. In this example, it was just livestock in one small part of the American West. And when we see um, ecosystems that are highly degraded, where people would say, um, these things don't have much hope, and then all of a sudden, thing, plants start sprouting up as soon as uh, the recovery starts. And we are just completely impressed. The plants start coming back. The animals start coming back. So nature has built in mechanisms for high levels of resiliency. That gives me hope.